Hi everyone, Katie here. Welcome back to another layout video. Today I have a double page spread that I'm working on and I'm using some pictures from um, an Incan archaeological site that we went to during our trip to Peru. Um, and this is definitely like a Paige Evans inspired layout. So I start with two sheets of smooth basil cardstock um, the color is Caribbean Breeze, and then I have three sheets from the 6x8 pad from Pink Paisley called Horizon, and I was very lucky to find this recently at a local Tuesday morning. I'm super excited that they are starting to get more, um, so hopefully we'll be seeing even more um, new products um, here to come. So I sliced them all into um, about an inch and a half wide strips. Um, and I'm going to use these strips to um, kind of decorate my paper before I do any kind of embellishing. So you can see I'm laying out my photos and trying to figure out exactly um, what size strips I need as I am here uh, cutting with my little guillotine trimmer. I ultimately decide to go with two and a half inch strips for the most part and then obviously that doesn't go into eight nicely so I'm left over with some larger strips as well but the two and a half inch ones are what you see that I am using there and I'm trying to build up a little pattern um, I've got my like purple flower uh, followed by the pink ombre and the green and then that repeats here actually I guess I start there with the pink ombre green purple flower, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, I have it so that I have two of each in a line. And what I'm going to do with this is um, use my low-tack tape that is actually from uh, We Are Memory Keepers. It's made for the foil quill to tape it down along the edge because the tape's not going to stay there. I'm going to take my sewing machine, and this is actually just the sewing machine that I used for sewing, too. I am not like an avid seamstress, so I guess I think it's okay to use my sewing machine for paper as well. I'm sure an avid seamstress would have um, something else to say about that. But as you can see, I stitch a line right down the center of those little papers. Actually, it's kind of hard to see. Um, but that's what I do. I stitch a line right down the center, and that's the only way that they are adhered to the paper. I've taken off my um, low-tack tape, and since I'm using the foil quill low-tack tape, or really, I'm sure any low-tack tape, it does not um, hurt the paper at all, which is perfect. And now I'm using my scissors, just my regular craft scissors, to fringe all these edges, which it's a lot, and I'm not going to make you watch all of it. If you had a pair of actual fringe scissors, um, that would be helpful. Uh, but I don't have one of those, so here I am cutting and slicing each little piece. Um, and yes, it takes forever, but I think it's totally worth it. So you can see I've done quite a bit of it here um, around where my photos will be. And I left a little open space so I could do some journaling as well. Now, I wanted to map my photos, but I didn't want it to be a big, loud, busy mat. So I go ahead and just, oh, sorry, that's my puppy. I am making a very thin white mat um, for each of my photos. Now my photos are pretty unusual sizes because I've cut off little bits of them just to try to make it all fit um, on my layout. And you know, sometimes in your photos, you, you just have extra space, right? So I had been cutting off those, those um, extra bits and my um, photo mats are funky and odd and non-traditional, but it does work out. Um, I'm using an extra piece of white cardstock. This is one of the ones that sometimes comes in the middle of page protectors, uh, when you buy like a new pack of page protectors for your albums. And I've noticed that I have a ton of this white paper and I thought, oh, I'll never buy white cardstock again. Um, and then only to come to find out that it's not actually 12 by 12. Um, I'm sure some of it is that you buy, but this is 12 by 11 and a half. Isn't that so strange? Um, if you know why they do that, let me know. Or if you've had that problem, let me know. So I've had to, you know, cut off quite a bit and 
do some funky things to make it work. But ultimately, it does work. And if that's the biggest problem I have today, then I'm doing well. So I've got my photos here, and you can see how I'm just fringing up the little pieces just with my fingers, you know, kind of bending up the edges um, to give it that texture and dimension. Um, and the more I think about it, the more it kind of looks, you know, pinata birthday-like. Um, which, if that's what you think it is, that's fine. Do one of these kind of layouts for a birthday. Or don't do it at all if you don't like it. I really like it, and it's kind of one of those things that popped into my head. Um, and I wanted to try it, so I'm happy I've done it. And you can see I kind of make my own little journaling box using my glitter, uh, glittery jelly roll pen. Just kind of creating my own box. Really, if I had to do over again, I probably would have used some kind of template or something because if you look closely, of course, my square is not perfect. Um, and I'm not writing in perfect lines when I'm writing my journaling with my white jelly roll pen, but you know what? It's fine. Um, so I'm just writing about this place. It was super cool. They're not quite sure if it was meant as an amphitheater or if it was meant as like a, an agricultural laboratory, um, which is what most people think it was. So super cool, very, um, really, I mean, ingenious. The Incans were extremely smart um, engineering people where they were, you know, potentially testing how crops grew at different altitudes, um, which is a big deal in Peru. So I just thought this place was fascinating. Um, and I'm looking, you can see my itinerary to um, see exactly the name of it and how to spell it. So we've got more as the name which I really like because, man, I can spell that with my thickers. Um, it's not too long, and it's not a whole bunch of E's or A's or something that I know I don't have. Um, so I'm spelling that out. These thickers are kind of like an iridescent, um, I kind of think of them as, you know, mermaid style um, with the shimmery, like, cardstock top, top and a pink foam base, um, which I just love. They're called Coastline. I've been able to pick up this my second set, that I've gotten just from a local Walmart, um, which I really appreciate the prices there too. Um, so I'm going to put these directly on top of my fringy bits, which I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous. I was like, will you ever see this? Will you ever notice it? And the answer is uh, kind of, I mean, yeah, for the most part, yes, you notice it, yes, you see it. Is it necessarily the first thing that your eyes go to when you look at my layout? No, I don't think so, but that's okay because Ultimately, I had to look up the name of this place. I totally forgot it, but I remember these memories, and I'm happy that my eyes are more drawn to my pictures than my title. And I'm glad that I have my title in there, too. So, I think it all works out well. Now, I'm really happy with my first page of my double page layout. Now I'm starting to work on my second page, and I've got these three four by six photos. I don't want to trim them down, so I'm just going to stack them, and they fit really nicely on this 12 by 12 piece of paper. And in order to make them look like they have a mat, I'm just cutting off two strips of white paper um, to put around the edges. Again, so it looks like they're all matted, um, but there's nothing in between them going horizontally, which if there was, it wouldn't fit. So, um, you know, I like how I do that there. And also it saves some paper, not that I need a whole lot of white cardstock to be saved, but you know, it's nice to have, right? So I'm putting these down, I'm kind of sent, or I guess justifying it to the right, um, because I want to have more space on the left to um, embellish and add more of my little fringy bits um, like I did on the other page. Now, this is a lot of space, and I kind of wonder, I'm like, man, why did I make my journaling box, like, on this page? There's a lot more space on this page. Um, but I think it works out, and actually, I really like what I do here. I'm continuing the line at the top and the bottom of my fringy bits. Again, with two and a half inch uh, long little strips of paper, and I'm going to sew them right down the middle and I'm going to, uh, you know, cut them and fringe them just like I did to the ones on the you know, left side of the paper. And again, I won't make you watch all this, but you see I'm still going to use a much wider strip, or I'm sorry, a much longer strip of paper here in the middle, but I am not going to fringe this. 
I am going to lay it down flat. And the reason I'm doing that is just because I felt like it would be too much if I did it. I love all the texture. I love all the color. I really think it'd be too much if I made that all fringy too. Also, I didn't think that I could get the ratios of, you know, exactly how wide those are, how wide these are. I didn't think I could get those to work very well. So this is what I, you know, decide on and I really love what I'm doing. Again, sorry about the pup. So here you can see I've got it all done. I've got it all down. And now I want to embellish. Now I know that's a little crazy because there's so much on this layout already. But I don't embellish much. But I have the Paige Evans Go the Scenic Route chipboard. And I think it really coordinates well with this. So I love that I have this North and South America um, little piece of the map that I put right there um, in the middle of the rightmost page. I think that works out perfectly and I'm so glad I've used that chipboard. Additionally, I have the travel far and wide words um, and then I put on just a couple more, a little flower and a little heart to embellish the right side of the page. And there's so much else on this layout that I decide to stop right there. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this layout and I'll see you next time. Bye!